Good morning, Year 10. Welcome to your second lesson on um, English language paper um, two, which is the non-fiction one. Hi there. Uh, so we're going to carry on looking at um, some examples for section A, which is the reading. Uh, in preparation for you to um, do your own piece of writing um, to prepare for section B, which is the writing section, where you need to do your own piece of writing. So. Um, just a reminder, we're looking at why people write nonfiction, and we're going to try and get our head around the bigger picture um, as to why we're actually doing this. Um, so the first thing I need you to do, I've uploaded a PDF of this newspaper article called Don't Get Me Started, Why the Heck Have They Closed My Child's School? And actually, I've called the PDF that I've sent you, I've called it Snow Day. Um, it was published on the 7th of January in 2010. So literally just after the schools reopened um, after the Christmas holiday. So I'm going to get the PDF up on screen now. There you go. Um, and what we're going to do together is we're going to read through it. So where are we? There it is. Super. OK, so let's read through this article together, first of all, so that we can understand what's going on and what it's about. Remember, this is called viewpoints and perspectives. So they're probably going to have quite a strong opinion. Right, why the heck have they closed my child's school? My ears are still ringing from the whoops of delight from my three daughters when they discovered that we were snowed in and school had been cancelled for the foreseeable future. They've abandoned the algebra and spelling tests for snowball fights and building snowmen. They can't believe that after just one day back at school, they're back to sleepovers and late nights again. Well, lucky old them. I admit that being snowed in on Tuesday did feel a bit like a post-festive gift, for a few hours anyway, but dear God, when are these children going to go back to school so that I can get on with earning a living? My house is a wash, with soggy gloves and abandoned boots, and my floors are sodden. What's more, the kids are treating me like an unpaid waitress as they demand a steady stream of hot chocolate. Like harassed mums up and down the country have quickly gone from enjoying the picture postcard views from every window to pleading with the heavens for a big thaw. Meanwhile, as I struggle to dig the car out of our snowbound drive, my snow-crazed children are too busy making whoopee to help. So tell me, how come shop workers, office staff and the emergency services are somehow managing to plough on Yet schools up and down the country are keeping their doors firmly shut. Similarly peeved parents on mum's neck this week are asking the same question. Shops are open, private day nurseries are open, businesses are open, but schools are shut. Why? asks one mum. Another moans, how is it that working mums and dads have to get the train to drive to work, uh, to, to get the train or drive to work in snow, but teachers can't get on a train to town and walk less than a mile to school. The comment I found most chilling of all came from a mum whose child's head teacher told her he could remember the schools staying shut for three weeks in the 1960s because of heavy snow. Try not to worry though, I finally thought of a use for all those non-working mums with four-wheel drive cars. We can enlist them to pick up teachers from their snowbound sanctuaries and get them and our kids back to school. Ooh, she's quite cross, isn't she? Okay, so um, this is an example of an opinion newspaper article. This is the kind of thing that you will probably have to write uh, for your exam. It's a really good skill um, to learn, actually, just in life in general, um, so that you can get your message across. So let's just have a little look at um, some questions. Uh, I have put all these questions on the PDF for you. If you just have a quick look through them now, um, and then what I'll do, I will get my little highlighter thing up on um, Acrobat, um, and I can actually annotate it as we go. Uh, so if I just do this, there you go. So you see this little tool up here? You can use that. If you're not able to print this out at home, then that's probably the best thing you can do. Um, you can highlight it as we go. Okay, so let's have a look through 
some of these questions. We're just going to look at these top six, first of all, just to get some comprehension going. OK, number one, why were her daughters whooping with delight at the start of the article? OK, uh, the whoops of delight from my three daughters when they discovered we were snowed in and school had been cancelled. I think that's why they were so excited. OK, if you want to pause the video, by the way, and work through these first and then press play again, see whether you were right. That's probably the best thing to do. Uh, okay, how did she feel about being snowed in at first? Okay, at first. So, she does say, I admit being snowed in on Tuesday did feel like a bit of a post-festive gift. Okay, so it felt like a Christmas, post-Christmas, just after Christmas, an extra Christmas present. That's what it felt like. But the rest of the question is, how long did this feeling last? Just a few hours. Okay. Uh, what does she want to happen? What does she want to be getting on with? She says, dear God, when are these children going to go back to school so that I can get on with earning a living? So she wants the schools to open again so that she can get back to work. Fair enough. She's had enough of her kids over Christmas. Right. She then has the question four. list her four complaints. Right. Four things that she says, and it's in this paragraph here. She says, my house is awash with soggy gloves and abandoned boots, and my floors are sodden. Sodden means soaking wet. What's more, the kids are treating me like an unpaid waitress, as they demand a steady stream of hot chocolate. So she's angry, she's complaining, because the kids are making a mess, and they're treating her like a waitress. Okay. Number five. What does she seem annoyed about towards the end of the article? So whoosh, down we go, down here. She says, shop workers, office staff and emergency services can get can go to work, but schools are shut. Shops are open, businesses are open, but schools are shut. How is it that working mums and dads can get to work, but apparently teachers can't? So I don't know about you, but I think the thing that is annoying her at the end of the article um, is the fact that schools are shut despite m working mums and dads actually going to school. So I think she sees that there's an injustice there, an imbalance. She's really cross about it. OK, question six. At the end of the article, she has an idea. And she targets a particular group of people with her frustration. Uh, she says, try not to worry, though. I finally thought of a use for all those non-working mums with four-wheel drive cars. We can enlist them to pick up teachers from their snowbound sanctuaries and get them and our kids back to school. So that's her idea. People who don't work, who've got big 4x4 four four Jeeps, big cars that can cope with driving in snow, not like a little tiny car that would get stuck. But people who don't work, who drive big 4x4s, four they can make themselves useful and they can pick up all the teachers from their houses and take them to school. Uh... It's interesting that she's targeted that group of people, isn't it? Presumably quite well off, quite middle class women who don't have to work, who drive around with big fancy cars. Uh, perhaps there's a bit of jealousy going on there. Perhaps she's jealous of their money or perhaps she's jealous of the fact they don't have to work. But she's certainly targeting her frustration at them, isn't she? OK. So that's quite, I think, quite straightforward, but quite well, well written as well. Um, if we go to the next slide, there we go, sorry, okay, we're now going to have a look at these different kinds of techniques that the author has used, um, and I want you to try and pick out all of these techniques and annotate the article yourself. If you can print it out, that would be brilliant, and then you can actually write on it. If you can't print it out, you can do what I'm doing and highlight it um, on, the, um, on the computer screen. <clears throat> but we do need to make sure we're annotating. It's a really key skill uh, that you need to be able to do. Okay, so let's get the um, article back up with the questions. Okay, I know it's tiny. I hope you can read it. Uh, but you have a copy of this PDF which was uploaded to show my homework for you. Okay, first thing, use of humour through sarcasm. Where is she being sarcastic? I think it's here. When she says, lucky old them. 
lucky old them. Does she mean? Oh, aren't they lucky to go to school? No. It's been really sarcastic. Well, lucky of the them. It's cross with them. Uh, and it's kind of funny, yeah? She's talking about her own children and she's being quite mean about them, which is kind of amusing, isn't it? Um, okay, so that's the sarcasm. Okay, now there's another phrase that shows how annoyed she is. And I'm just looking at this paragraph. I think it's this one. And she says, oh, dear God, when are these children going back to school? And I think the dear God bit is quite informal. It's quite exasperated. She's so cross. She's praying for a miracle. Send these kids back to school. She's so annoyed. Um, this one, number three, a chatty written style. She's quite chatty. But if we go down here, uh, she starts this paragraph with, so tell me, how come, blah, 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 blah. That's quite chatty, isn't it? Tell me. She's engaging us. She's saying, you tell me. You explain the situation to me. It's like we're having a conversation. Okay, uh, this one now, she links her personal dilemma with lots of other people to back up her opinion. And I think that's this bit here. So she has um, talked about her issues and then she says, actually, like harassed mums up and down the country, she's saying it's not just me, everyone across the whole country is in the same position as me. They're all harassed mums like me. And by including them, she's saying it's not just me, it's everyone else, which makes it seem more credible. Like she's not just one of the crazy lunatic all on her own. She's the voice of many people. She's speaking for everyone. We've then got here a personal story, like an anecdote that people can relate to. Um, so she's talking here about struggling to get the car out of the snowbound driveway. That's a bit of an anecdote, how difficult her day has been. Possibly, uh, you could talk about this, um, the head teacher who's saying that he can remember in the 1960s, the school being shut for three weeks, which is a very long time indeed to be closed just because of snow. So that personal anecdote um, uh, backs up her uh, um, helps us relate to her a bit more. Okay, her complaints, we've talked about her four complaints here, but she has other complaints, doesn't she? I think her main complaint is the fact that everyone else manages to get to work, so why on earth can't teachers get to work? That's her main complaint, isn't it? Right, interesting vocabulary. There are some lovely bits of vocabulary here. She's used a little bit of alliteration, which I quite like. Uh, peeved parents, I quite like peeved parents. Peeved just means annoyed, cross. Um, she talks about pleading with the heavens, which is another, you know, going back to dear God, pleading, please, send these children back to school. Um, but I also like this idea of snowbound sanctuaries. So a sanctuary is a, is a safe haven, it's a place of refuge. And the idea that a teacher's home is their sanctuary, away from school, um, it's quite amusing. It's quite interesting. She says we can rescue teachers from their snowbound sanctuaries. A really interesting vocabulary. Um, really keeps us kind of entertained. It's not dull, is it? Uh, she uses quite a few rhetorical questions to highlight her anger. Um, uh, how come shop workers can go there when schools keep their doors firmly shut? Why? Asks one mum. Just the exasperation, the desperation. Why? I don't understand it. Um, and also here, um, teachers can't get on a train, go less than a mile to school. So she uses three rhetorical questions. Um, actually four. She's got another one up here, isn't she? Four rhetorical questions. But she's constantly trying to engage us by asking us questions. Okay, another phrase to emphasise her anger and her frustration. Um, we've got the dear God um, up here. We've got the why, that one word sentence, why? Um, then we've got these facts and these quotes from other sources. So she's quoted the very reliable source of Mum's Net, <laughs> uh, which is a, a website for, for parents to chat about their issues with children. Um, and actually quite a lot of um, people do use Mum's Net. So 
If it's a topic on Mum's Net, it's obviously worthwhile talking about. Um, she also mentions this head teacher as well. So she's got validation, she's got credibility by other parents and head teachers talking about this as well. Okay, so we've managed to get quite a bit of information out from, from that article, quite a short article actually, um, which is great, you know. So um, using all of these techniques, which you will be doing, you'll be using all these techniques, is very well, but it's the way you write that will get you a level four. This means the voice and tone has to be confident and entertaining. Put another way, it's the personality of your written voice. And in the lesson we're doing on Monday, um, yeah, I'm going to give you a live lesson on Monday, we're going to look at some personalities, some um, really characterful writing, because that's what's going to be the most entertaining thing. Uh, so let's show you these other two opening extracts. Again, you have a PDF of this on Show My Homework. Um, right, so this is the first one. Um, these extracts are both on um, the topic that I've given you actually to write about, which is what annoys you about the about the modern world. Okay, so let's read text one. This person writes. I've never liked people using their mobile phones. They talk too loudly and interrupt my thoughts when I'm on the train. I would remove mobile phones from the 21st century, as I believe that without them, the world would be more peaceful. Mobile phones can also be a dangerous thing. We can be tracked with them, and that leaves us open to all sorts of dangerous situations. Recently, newspaper journalists were caught hacking into people's mobile phone messages and using that information to publish private information about people. I think this is clearly wrong. Okay, just leave it there. Go on to the second one. What annoys you? Spam in your email? Or perhaps irritatingly discovering something actually useful in that spam? Maybe spam's not the enemy, but those websites that play music when you are on their homepage. There I am, stealing a moment in the day to surf the net while the kids are asleep when BOOM! Music comes blaring out of my laptop, followed closely by the high-pitched screams of my children. A few expletives later, I vow never to use the services of vistaprint.co.uk. My day couldn't get any worse. Why do Sky customer services decide they're going to call me for an update on my services just as I'm cooking the evening meal? I bet our grandparents didn't have these problems. No, these are 21st century annoyances. Okay, so two um, quite different uh, openings there, but on the same topic. Um, so what I'm going to ask you to do, or what we're going to do together now, zoom in and look closely at how the writers have written their articles. One is much more successful than the other. I'm going to let you decide uh, which one that is. Um, you have this uh, table, as, um, you've got this as a PDF as well. So I'm going to go through it on the screen with you and highlight bits on the um, PDF file with my little highlighter. You are going to fill in this table. You're going to write on it yourselves at home to prepare for writing your own um, piece. So let me... There we go. Okay, sorry, I was just getting that ready for you. Okay, there it is. Right, there's the little table. So let's have a look at this. Right, so the first thing we're going to do is compare the openings. How do the writers introduce their annoyances? Okay, so this, I've never liked people using their mobile phones. They talk too loudly when I'm on the train. That's how this person introduced it. Text two, what annoys you? Spam in your email? Or discovering something useful in that spam? So text two, introduces it quite differently. Text one just says, I don't like this. Text two gives us some um, rhetorical questions to try and engage us. So be thinking about, oh, which one's better? What kind of technique can I steal 
and use in my writing. Okay, what are their reasons for these things annoying them? Which text has listed the most reasons? So text one, uh, the reasons they don't like mobile phones, people talk too loudly on them, they can be dangerous. That's it really, isn't it? They can be hacked. Text two, um, so the modern world is annoying, these 21st century annoyances, so spam and uh, problems with spam, um, websites that play music really loudly, um, customer services, calling me while I'm making dinner. Which has the most reasons? I think maybe text two. Text two has more, has more detailed reasons, doesn't it? Okay, how do the writers show their opinions? And we're going to look at words and phrases. So remember, you're going to be writing this down in here. You're not just going to be highlighting. You need to do work at home. Copy this into a notebook. I don't mind how you do it. Um, so how do they show their opinions? Well, text one, I've never liked this. I believe this. I think this. Very straightforward. Text two doesn't actually say, I don't like this. They're not explicit, but they say things like, my day couldn't get any worse. These are 21st century annoyances. So we've also got lots of negative words like boom, screams, <laughs> uh, enemy, okay, expletives, which is a posh way of saying swear words, okay, swearing. Um, so I think in text two, this is how they show their opinion, isn't it? By using words like enemy and boom and screams and couldn't, nothing could get worse. It's making me swear. We can tell they're frustrated. Okay, which writer communicates their opinion in a more entertaining way? It's up to you. I know which one I prefer. It's up to you. You just need to make sure you back up your opinion. Right, now we're going to look at the end of the extracts and we're going to look at their use of so at the end, this person finishes with, um, I think this is clearly wrong. I think this is clearly wrong. Okay? I think this is clearly wrong. Uh, this person ends with, I bet our grandparents didn't have these problems. No, these are 21st century annoyances. This one says, I bet our grandparents. So this one just says, I, me. This one says, our grandparents. So slightly different endings, okay? This this almost feels like they've finished writing. I think this is clearly wrong. Do you? That's interesting. Whereas this one is um our grandparents didn't have this problem. Gets us thinking, yeah you're right, this is a new problem. So everyone's gonna have a go at this high level question, because that's the kind of people you are. Uh, how does the way they use personal pronouns affect the reader. I don't know about you, but this one with I, 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 does say us here and we, but it's mainly I don't like this, I don't like that, I think this, I think that. It's a bit like, okay, that's what you think, fine, but I don't feel like I'm particularly engaged with you. Whereas the second one, what annoys you? Perhaps fans not the enemy, but Websites that play music when you are on their home page. Um, and then we've got our grandparents again. My day couldn't get any worse. So although it's they're both written in the first person, this one, I think, feels a bit more inclusive. Straight away, they've asked us a question. What annoys you? Oh, you're talking to me. Okay. And then, and then it becomes us towards the end. Our grandparents. I hope that makes sense. Um, so that's quite a bit of work for you to do at home. Um, okay, let's just quickly go through the rest of this. So this is what I'm going to be asking you to think about. And tomorrow, um, sorry, Thursday's lesson is not going to be live streamed. You're going to just have to write. So you have thought about the things that annoy you. Hopefully you've got one thing that annoys you more than anything else. Um, and you're going to think about planning for that. You'll be awarded um, marks for being entertaining and interesting, okay? You're supposed to entertain me. Do not bore me um, with your writing. 
So that is uh, your work to do in preparation for Thursday. You need to really decide what it is you're going to write about, why you're going to write about it. You're going to use all these amazing techniques here um, and you're going to try and make your work as interesting as you possibly can. Good. Thank you. I will speak to you again soon. Bye.